Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. What do you know about Diagon Alley? Because it's far more than just a shopping center for Britain's wizards and witches. Diagon Alley's history stretches back hundreds of years and survived countless goblin rebellions, wars with dark wizards, and even witch hunts. Today, we're going to take a look at Diagon Alley's secret history and find out how it came to be. Medieval Era Nobody really knows when the first store opened its doors in Diagon Alley, but rest assured there have been quite a few theories. After all, we know that Gringotts Wizarding Bank was established in 1474, just a century after the famous economic crash that shook the wizarding world to its core. It would make sense if Diagon Alley developed after the goblins established such a massive financial center. Gringotts would eventually become one of the most important daily fixtures in the entire wizarding world of Britain, and hundreds of wizards would regularly visit on a daily basis. Establishing an apothecary or one shop nearby was a sure way to catch customers who had galleons to spend. But others might think the Diagon Alley got its start on the day the Leaky Cauldron opened its doors. It's written within that pub's very address, or so it seems. Since the Leaky Cauldron's posted address is number one Diagon Alley, many wizarding historians supposed that the establishment of the famous pub and inn marked the beginning of Diagon Alley, but the truth is probably somewhere in between. Sometime in the medieval era, the part of London that would eventually become Diagon Alley must have been popular with local witches and wizards. Perhaps, even then, when it was just a mud-filled street with a few cobblestone patches, Ollivander's one shop and a few other magical vendors decided to plant their roots. Eventually, the area must have become so well known amongst wizards that the goblins of the era decided to construct Gringotts Bank there. And then, all of the other shops, which Harry and his friends knew so well, surely followed suit. Evolution Now, of all the places in the wizarding world, Diagon Alley strangely avoided the history books for most of its existence. In fact, it wasn't until the second rise of Voldemort and the start of Harry Potter's journey at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry that the street shows up often in records. But as we often like to do, we can certainly make a few educated guesses as to how this street evolved. With so much of the wizarding world's wealth concentrated in a single street, the stores that developed around it were crucial for the everyday life of witches and wizards. By this point in time, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry had been open for some centuries. Although the school still lacked many of the familiar facets that Harry Potter would come to love during his time there, Hogwarts was quite well known in Britain, and attending that school or any other school was important for the 28 pureblood families that populated the British Isles, which meant they'd do anything to make sure their child had the best robes, wands, and potion supplies, and where were they going to buy those items if not Diagon Alley? During this era, the ancestors of some of the most famous wizards of the 20th century frequented Diagon Alley as they prepared their children for the coming school year. If you walked around any corner, you'd be sure to find a gang of Sirius Black's forefathers or James Potter's great-great-great-great-grandparents. You'd likely even find a few Weasleys or Malfoys who came over from France during the Norman Conquest. List of Shops By the time Harry Potter journeyed to Diagon Alley, Along with Rubius Hagrid, the entire street was filled with dozens of stores, from Manuensis Quills to Elop's Owl Emporium. And after the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy, the street became even harder to find, as it was concealed behind countless enchantments and charms. Over the centuries, innumerable stores popped up alongside Gringotts and added to the culture of the alley. So let's take a moment and peruse through a few of these. If you were in the mood for tricks and jokes, you'd be best served by Gamble and Jape's Wizarding Joke Shop. Before Fred and George left Hogwarts to open their own store, the Weasley twins would often visit Gamble and Jape's to gather all they would need to terrorize August Filch during the upcoming school year. The store held hundreds of items, but they were most famous for Dr. Filibuster's fabulous wet start, No Heat Fireworks, which could be ignited with just a bit of water. And if you needed some of the finer supplies for class, you could stop by the Magical Menagerie. Located on the north side of Diagon Alley, 
Right across from the sweet shop where Hagrid bought Harry a cone of chocolate and raspberry ice cream, the magical menagerie carried almost every type of magical pet in the wizarding world. There were puffskin, crested toads, ferrets, bats, and of course owls. Ron and Hermione would often visit the magical menagerie whenever they needed to get ointments or digestive cures for their pets. Now, if you had a sharp eye, you might notice that among the many artisan stores within Diagon Alley, there were plenty of second-hand shops as well. From second-hand robes to second-hand books, any wizard or witch on a budget would have found anything they needed. But if you had galleons to spend, you were welcome to use them too. At Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions, you could find expertly crafted robes and dresses, and at Ollivander's wand shop, you could get your hands on the most important tool a wizard would ever need, his wand. The wand shop claimed to have been in operation since 382 BC, but whether they had been in Diagon Alley all that time, or had moved there after having set up shop somewhere else, was one of the hottest debates among historians of the time. As you might recall, Ollivanders crafted the Harry Potter's wand, which just so happened to be the twin to Lord Voldemort's. As you wandered around the district, you'd also notice that there were plenty of businesses that weren't really open to the public. These were the offices of some of the most important publishers in the wizarding world, from the Daily Prophet to the Ministry Press. Even Obscurus Books, the publishers behind Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, had an office in the alley. If you want a list of all of the shops in Diagon Alley, leave a comment down below. Spin-offs But when you walked around Diagon Alley, you might notice that there were a few odd twists and turns that might tempt you off the main street. If you took any of those routes, you might find yourself at a less reputable market that intersected Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley. One of these, Nocturne Alley, would send a shiver down any normal wizard or witch. This street was famous for housing shops that sold dark relics and magical items. Its most famous shop, Borgen & Burks, was even a temporary employer for a young Tom Riddle. That shop held no shortage of dangerous items, from cursed necklaces to the Hand of Glory. But just like the main district of Diagon Alley, Nocturne had plenty of other shops to tempt a dark wizard or witch. In fact, by the time Harry Potter enrolled at Hogwarts, Nocturne Alley's reputation seemed to abate, as many pureblood families shopped there, instead of Diagon Alley. Amongst Nocturne's many shops, there were dark relic vendors like Cobb and Webb, Shiver Wretch's venoms and poisons for all of your nefarious needs, and even a dark alternative to the Leaky Cauldron, a pub known as the White Wyvern. But Nocturne was just one of the many offshoots from the main Diagon Alley district. If you needed to find a new house elf, you could always venture to the nearby district of Carkit Market, where the house elf placement agency would sort you out. Or if you wanted to buy the perfect troll puppet for your nephew or niece, you could go to Horizont Alley and visit Periwinkle's Playthings, where their wide array of toys and marionettes drew long lines. Conclusion Diagon Alley was the beating heart of the wizarding community. Besides Hogwarts, there was hardly any other place where so many wizards could comfortably go about town, embracing the most joyful part of the magical world. Whether they were taking a family stroll to Sugar Plum's sweet shop for a nice Sunday trip, or scheduling their summer vacation at the office of Terror Tours, Diagon Alley was as important for wizards as just about anything else in their lives. And even though the streets of the shopping district often cleared out during times of conflict, as they did during Lord Voldemort's second rise, they'd come right back to life as soon as the coast was clear. And that's it for this video. What do you think of Diagon Alley? Of all the places in the wizarding world, is this on the top of your must-see list? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, remember, it is the quality of one's convictions that determines success, not the number of followers.